Mogram is the captain of the witch's secret police. So uh, we always were going to use CG wolves from Mogram and Varden for a number of key scenes. But again, we did cast actual hybrid wolves to be these characters in the film. But ultimately, because of that, we weren't able to use a lot of their performances. The director will go through certain shots when we have a pack of wolves, and he will go through and cherry pick certain wolves that he says, well, this one doesn't look intelligent enough. This one looks like he's chasing his ball. This is an army of wolves that need to be vicious. And we've got some interesting plates where there's some nice vicious wolves in there, but there's also eight of them. And some of them are busy chasing their tail, and we've got to take those out and get some more vicious guys in there. There's been shots where we actually go in and do tail replacement just because some of the wolves look a little too happy. If that happens, we get in there, we take the tails out, we'll just animate the tails on those guys. This is where the dogs break through into the beaver's hut. This is all the live action plate, and you'll see that when the hero dog breaks through, he basically turns and goes off another direction. The way that Andrew wanted to play this was that the dog breaks through, and he basically comes up to camera and stands there menacingly. So we paint out this dog and put a CG dog in his place. The first dog comes through, second CG dog gives his menacing look. Lucy! <laughs> For the different types of creatures, uh, it's a challenge for different types of people. And one of the tasks for the animation supervisor is to uh, cast uh, good actors, uh, animators like to call themselves actors, into roles that, that they fit into best. Um, in some cases you have an animator who's a really good creature person. So for our angry wolves who are fighting or baring their teeth, uh, an animator who's very talented at m making a creature feel horrific, he's the kind of person we would cast in a role of, of animating an angry wolf. Whereas there's other people that are more character actor types and uh, they work on the characters like uh, Mr. and Mrs. Beaver are more character based. Uh, while you know they look real, they, they walk and talk. Well, they talk like you and I, and, and, and even to some degree, they have a lot more character than a human. And so somebody who can, who can act that out, who, who knows how to make a character shine, will work on those characters. What happened here? This is what becomes of those who cross the witch. The fox is voiced by Rupert Everett. It's a fully CG fox. Um, we based the models on a, some reference that was shot from a live action fox. And again, looked at a lot of video reference to you know, get our heads around how a fox moves. And you find that different than a wolf, it moves very much like a cat. It's almost like a cat dog, the way it moves. <laughs> In getting a fox to speak, it's a fine line between a caricatured action and a believable fox. The fox has to be believable as a fox, but to have these little nuances, these little human nuances that sort of push it in the, the direction of intelligence. A lot of what I did to get the detail and to get the thinking and to get that to read as, as having some kind of intelligence behind what he's doing is in really subtle, small movements in the eyebrows and the way the eyes are twitching around. Small ear twitches, the way the nose inflates with the breath. We had specific controls made for, for the fox particularly that could get certain twists in the eyebrows and get the lids to change shape in very small ways when the eyes change just to, to keep him alive and to keep him, even though he's not physically doing all that much, like he's got a thought in his head and has to be able to read as something is going on. <laughs> well, I wish I could say that bark was worse than that bite. Ow! The fox was built very anatomically from the ground up with all its musculature and bones, and you see the bones pushing, and you, you feel that weight when the fox moves around because of the scapula push in the back. All of the elements are there to make it fully believable. But time is short, and Aslan himself has asked me to gather more troops. <gasps> You've seen Aslan? What's he like? There is a whole library of facial poses that were built from our muscle system. Again, since it's a, a muscle-based system, there's a lot of muscles represented in the face that are a little difficult to manage if we went muscle by muscle. So using the, those muscles, we build poses for the animators to use. The beauty of that is we can use the poses 90% of the time, but go in and dial a little muscle to crank something up in a particular area that needs that little extra push. <laughs> 